like where I was driving before, where you could kind of overlook and see Red Rocks, I mean, right where that Porsche was, uh -huh. is probably going to be the best. Uh, my name is Dan Stockmar. Uh, I'm from Denver, Colorado, and this is my Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution. It's a 2003. What made me pick up the Evo, I'm a little embarrassed to say, but Fast and Furious has a little bit of an influence. But honestly, there was a guy in college who had one and I had a 95 Eclipse Turbo and it smoked me bad. So ever since college, I've wanted one and I finally landed a decent job and picked one up. Uh, Eric at Driveline Engineering, he, he was on Evo M and he posted a thread and I mean, he's their vendor. So I just called him up and little part by little part, we did the street kit and then he uh, he sent me a PM and he said he has the cyber kit, which sure no one in Colorado has. So I picked it up and uh, we fitted it on and the fitment's just about perfect. So I couldn't pass it up. And the reason I went with this motor was the engine builder, Lucas at Cars Performance, he uh, influenced me on the 2.3 because it's a, it's a pretty streetable motor and then he just asked what turbo I wanted, what kind of horsepower I wanted. So I went with uh, Precision 6765 and he just built the motor to be bulletproof basically. So uh, he let me know the prices and he let me know what parts I could choose from and uh, I did some research. We did Ross pistons, turbo tough rods and that's been bulletproofed ever since. Uh, it's a little bit funny of a story, but I told Lucas, uh, I said, you're not getting paid un unless we hit 700 horsepower. So he kind of laughed and he says, I don't know if it's going to do it. And I said, I mean, it's simple as that. You don't get, you don't get paid unless you, you, hit the, uh, you hit the 700 mark. And that was my goal. And I mean, it was within 10 minutes of tuning that we hit 700. And, and honestly, his hands were shaking by the time he was done with it. And we stopped at 720 because it's, it's, a, it's a nice number that I wanted to reach. I didn't want to push the motor to its ultimate max. And it's, it's a blast. My favorite part about the car is probably the body kit. I mean, it's just unique. No one else has it. And then I also like the forward-facing turbo um, because no one else in Colorado has that either. And uh, it's kind of a one-off part. I, when I blew my uh, OEM motor, uh, it just happened to come out that these guys were all testing these forward-facing, so I'd give it a try. And it's it's much better than, than the uh, standard side mount turbo. I mean, the airflow is so much better. And then obviously the body kit is, uh, is as rare as it is. Uh, I just wanted to be a little bit different with this build. When a vehicle is dressed to kill with a full Voltex Aero Kit, it better have the goods under the hood. Cars Performance built up the 4G63 to deliver 2.3 liters of displacement. A K1 Technology stroker crank is connected to the 10 to 1 Ross pistons by Manly Turbo Tough connecting rods. Madcap Racing ported the 4G63 cylinder head before installing a complete SuperTech valve train and competition cams 280 degree bump sticks. A PTNE 6765 turbocharger resides on an extreme turbo systems forward facing manifold. An AEM EMS controls the giant injectors that deliver the E85 to the party. With the boost cranked up to 33 PSI, over 720 horsepower is delivered to the SuperTech Dyno. Since the torque output of the 4G63 has been nearly doubled, the clutch and transmission require upgrade. Sheptrans worked its magic on the box, while an Exidy triple plate ceramic clutch controls the power. The interior features an 8-point roll bar built by Cars Performance, a Sparco steering wheel, AEM Uego, AEM serial link gauges, and a carbon fiber rear seat delete. This Evo 8 stands apart from the crowd thanks to the Voltex Racing Street Aero Kit and Cyber Evo over fenders. A Voltex Racing carbon fiber hood sheds a few pounds in the makeover, while JDM Evo 9 bumpers, headlights, and taillights freshen the look. My future plans for the car was to try to get into D-Sport. I mean, that was that was my ultimate goal. And since I accomplished that, I mean, there's nothing really next. I don't have any more plans. I mean, I basically everything's done to the car. I'd like to maybe sell it, start another project, and uh, go from there. The girlfriend does not get to drive the car. <laughs> she could if she had to. I've got nothing really against it. But uh, it's a, it's, it takes a little effort to get over speed bumps and stuff, and she wouldn't want to have to pay to fix something that <laughs> she cracked. Thank <laughs> you.